Ukrainian fighters have repelled a large-scale offensive by the occupying Russian army in the direction of the city of Kupiansk in the Kharkiv region. The Ukrainian general staff reported this. The invaders, advancing with 15 armored combat vehicles, including tanks and armored personnel carriers, moved in two columns from the Lyman district. The advancing vehicles became targets of artillery and drones of fighters from the 14th and 116th brigades of the Ukrainian army. As a result, a large number of vehicles, along with paratroopers, were destroyed, and the attack was stopped. According to Ukrainian fighters, some of the soldiers of the occupying army were dressed in Ukrainian army uniforms. The goal was to confuse Ukrainian fighters. North Korea's troops in Russia are largely thought to be from Pyongyang's elite Storm Corps, but one ex-member of the branch said he thought North Korea did send special forces, but not its best, according to Business Insider. As questions arise over the quality of Kim Jong-un's troops in Russia, a former soldier who served in North Korea's special forces said they're likely the country's elite troops. Lee Woong-gil, who defected to South Korea in 2007, told the Korea Times, which is headquartered in the South Korean capital of Seoul, that he believed the North Korean men cited in Russia were indeed special forces. They do not appear to be the finest members, however, he told the outlet. Kang Chol hwan a North Korean defector and journalist, cited accounts from informants in the North asserting that the North Korean soldiers sent to Russia do not match the media's portrayal of them as elite army members. He claimed that the troop deployment to Russia is merely part of North Korean leader Kim Jong-un's ruthless business strategy aimed at profiting from the war, emphasizing that Kim is primarily focused on how much money he can generate. North Korean troops sent to Russia are not elite army members, Kang said. Kim Jong-un would benefit more from dispatching inexperienced soldiers to the front lines as they will likely become cannon fodder. The more North Koreans die on the battlefield, the more money he stands to gain from Russia. The war in Ukraine has turned into a lucrative business opportunity for Kim Jong-un since North Korea and Russia signed a military pact that began with arms and artillery supplies and later expanded to troop deployments. The North Korean regime is infamous for its exploitative remittance policies. Washington and Kyiv Ukraine's capital say they believe that about 11,000 North Korean troops have been sent to Russia to aid in the Ukraine war, including some 8,000 dispatched to the Kursk region. There's been debate over how well these troops measure up to modern standards for special forces or whether the North Korean men in Russia are even from the country's prestigious unit. South Korea's Defense Ministry estimates that the Storm Corps has 200,000 members, a staggering total for a special forces branch. During a September visit to a training base, Kim lauded the division's members as each being worth 100 typical North Korean soldiers. But Seoul has described these troops in Russia as young, inexperienced men sent to be mere cannon fodder. Sometimes a counter-offensive by the Russian armed forces results in an enemy armored personnel carrier with infantry driving very close to Ukrainian tanks which shoot at point blank. One of the Ukrainian drone operators said that the Ukrainian armed forces are very lucky that the Russian armed forces conduct a lot of Benzai attacks. 
Forbes reports, the Kremlin is ready to accept major losses from the Russian armed forces just to regain control of the entire Kursk region by Trump's inauguration. OSINT analyst Kriegsforscher reports that yesterday, November the 11th, under the cover of a smokescreen, the enemy from the 51st Airborne Regiment and the 155th Marine Brigade of the Russian armed forces attacked the positions of the Ukrainian armed forces head on. A total of 18 infantry fighting vehicles, BMDs, armored personnel carriers, and the MTLBs, as well as five T-72, T-80, and T-90 tanks were thrown into the battle. All of them were formed into three groups. The Ukrainian armed forces met the enemy with drones and tanks. The battle itself was chaotic and bloody. Putin's army left three tanks and 15 armored vehicles on the battlefield. According to Kriegsforscher, two Ukrainian tank crews, possibly from the 17th Brigade, drove to meet the enemy but missed each other. Four armored vehicles with Russian infantry drove past them. Only when the landing party began to disembark did the Ukrainian forces notice them and open fire. It is not uncommon for the Ukrainian armed forces to kill many enemy soldiers with a single precision strike. This happened last Saturday when 15 soldiers from the 51st Airborne Regiment dismounted. Ukrainian drone operators eliminated every single one of them. Ukrainian defenders also die on the battlefield and not always in the battle itself. Most often, the enemy simply shoots those who surrender. Putin is trying with all his might to regain the Kursk region. According to the same Kriegsforscher, one of the elite units of the Russian Federation, the 76th Airborne Division, is currently on its way to Kursk. Former British Prime Minister Liz Truss spent her final days in office in 2022 prepared for Russia to use nuclear weapons on Ukraine. An updated edition of the politician's biography, Out of the Blue, notes that the potential consequences would have affected Britain, which is why crisis meetings were held, among other things. Truss spent hours studying satellite weather data and wind patterns, preparing for radiation poisoning should the Kremlin dictator move to use nuclear weapons, the Times reports. The fears were reportedly based on US intelligence that there was a 50% chance that Russia would deploy tactical nuclear weapons in a war against Ukraine or use a more powerful warhead over the Black Sea. The media also writes that on October the 18th, 2022, when the then UK Defence Secretary Ben Wallace traveled to the United States to discuss a full-scale Russian invasion, US President Joe Biden stated that there was a direct threat of similar actions by Russia if the situation continued to develop along the same scenario it was moving along. Media reported earlier that the war in Ukraine could accidentally escalate into a nuclear conflict, all because of Russia's actions or inactions regarding nuclear weapons near the front. Moreover, Russia's failure to properly secure its nuclear arsenals in the country's west poses a grave danger as Ukraine's desire to strike targets inside Russia increases. Foreign Affairs writes, Ukraine has every right to defend itself in this way, and there is no indication that Ukrainian forces will deliberately target nuclear warhead storage sites. However, with Ukrainian drone strikes already reaching Moscow, it is clear that at least 14 Russian nuclear storage sites are now within range of their drones. The article says, Two of these sites are reportedly located about 150 kilometers from the border with Ukraine. Another five are approximately 250 to 300 kilometers away. These distances are within the range of the advanced missiles that Western allies are transferring to Ukraine and which are still prohibited from striking Russian territory. The media writes that responsibility for the movement of nuclear warheads lies directly with the Russian government. Russia knows that its warheads should not be located near conventional military operations. After Ukraine launched its first drone and missile strikes on Belgorod in the spring of 2023, Russia quickly announced that its Belgorod storage facility no longer contained nuclear warheads, understanding that warheads should not be stored near active combat. In addition, the satellite showed the preparation of the Russian R-30 Bulava nuclear missile. The missile is reportedly one of the components of the nuclear triad 